Hey guys, today we're going to be working on setting up pressure advance on the Creality Sonic Pad. The instructions I give are probably going to work on any Clipper implementation. I'm focusing on the Sonic Pad because it's what I have, and for whatever reason, Creality didn't really put anything about pressure advance in the instructions. It's, it's there, but there's nothing showing you how to set it up or what the advantages are, so I'm going to explain some of that stuff right now. So what is pressure advance? I'm not going to get too far into detail, but I am going to put a link in the description below that gets into some of the more sciencey parts of pressure advance. Suffice it to say, what it does is it changes the extrusion rate going into corners and when the extruder stops pushing filament. Um, two big things, two big advantages to it. A, it'll help with your stringing issues, and B, it'll prevent over extruding in sharp corners, um, and corners in general. Um, it'll, it'll make your corners a lot sharper and uh, just help the overall quality of your print. I'll show you an example here so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, guys, I'm going to try and show you what I mean by... Uh pressure advance here using some uh, cubes I printed before I turned on pressure advance. You can see here as I turn it, if you look at the edges, the vertical edges, as I spin this cube, you can see there's a little bit of a bulge on the edges. Now the reason that's happening is because the algorithm that's being used for the extrusion it's not accounting for the deceleration as it's going into corners. So what ends up happening is, uh, you know, there's just a little too much filament getting pushed out of the extruder or out of the nozzle as it's getting into the corner. Over the course of the whole thing, as it's printing the layers, you end up with this bulge. And, uh, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but if you want it to look a little better, that's where pressure advance comes in. Now, just for comparison, this cube I printed after I set up the pressure advance settings in the Sonic Pad. And you can see here, corners are a lot sharper, not as much bulge, if any. Um, so, like I said, that's the big advantage of pressure advance. It makes those edges look really crisp. So, uh, next we'll get into how we set that up on the Sonic Pad. So you're going to need two things to do this test. A, you're going to need a caliper. Um, a lot of you probably already have one. If you don't, I'll put a link to one in the description below. Um, the other thing you're going to need is this STL file from the Clipper documentation page. Um, you can see a picture of the finished print below. And you are going to want to print that with the settings that it says here, high speed. Um, I think I used 160 millimeters per second, zero infill, and a coarse layer height. Um, I use a 0.4 nozzle, or at least I did for this test. So I used a 0.28 layer height. Um, it's not exactly 75%, but it's pretty close. And like it says here, any dynamic acceleration control you might have set up in your slicer, you're going to want to disable that. So go ahead, download that file, and print it with those settings I just mentioned. And then we'll get into figuring out the actual calculations of what the pressure advance should be. So before you print the test cube, there's some commands that you're going to want to add into the Sonic Pad. To do that, you're going to go to the web interface for the Sonic Pad. And you're going to run the following command. And this command is in the web page that I have referenced in the uh, comments below. Set underscore velocity underscore limit space square underscore corner. Velocity equals one, Excel equals 500. Now what that's gonna do is slow down this nozzle's travel speed when it's going through corners because it's gonna make the extruder pressure, the effects of the extruder pressure 
larger so that it stands out more than the cube. And you're just going to click on send. Once that runs, you're going to want to run one of two commands. Now, if you have a, uh, the commands are going to be different depending on if you have a direct drive extruder or a Bowden extruder. In my case, I'm using a CR10S Pro V2. So I'm going to enter the command for a Bowden. That command is tuning tower base command equals set underscore pressure advance parameter equals advance start equals zero factor equals point zero two zero. Um, you're going to run the same command if you have a direct drive extruder. The only thing you're going to change is the factor is going to be 0 0.005. And you're going to send that. Once you do those two things, you're going to print the test cube. And then we'll get into figuring out exactly what you want your pressure advanced settings to be. Okay, guys. So once you have your test cube printed... You're going to look at the edge, just like uh, when I looked at my edges before. And you're going to see here that it's actually along the edge going from over extruding at the bottom to under extruding at the top. What you're looking for is the sweet spot, which is right in here. You know, right in this area. So... This is where the caliper comes in. You're going to take your caliper and you're going to measure it. And you're going to try and get it to where you think the sweet spot is. It might be a little hard to see here, but trust me when I tell you, when you print it for yourself, you're definitely going to see where that sweet spot is. Um, you can see it a little bit here. Like I said, it's going to be the point where the extrusion's just right. It's not under extruded and it's not over extruded. The Goldilocks zone, let's call it. And you can see there, it's about 35 millimeters. Having said that, now we can uh, figure out what our pressure advance setting is actually going to be. So we're going to. Just use the equation on the web page. Like I said, the page is linked on the description of the video below. But it's pressure advance equals start height plus measured height times factor. Um, the factor is 0 0.02. So in our case, our start height is 0. So it's going to be 0 plus 35.0 in my case times 0 0.02, which gives us a 0 0.7. Um, that's our pressure advance setting. Now, in my case, you'll see uh, when we go over to my Sonic pad interface that I have mine set a little higher. Um, I went through this exercise already. I tweaked it a little bit, and I found for me it ended up being a 0.02. And you're probably going to have to do the same thing to get it just right. But uh, w once you have it just right, it will be worth it. Last step of this whole process is actually taking your calculation that you just figured out and entering it into your Sonic Pad configuration. You're not just going to run this from the console because it's a setting that's not going to change. Uh, you want it set up that way on startup. So we're going to go over to the configuration tab and we're going to find our printer.cfg file. That's where most of your settings are for Clipper. Just click on it to open it up. And once you do that, uh, you're going to want to find the extruder setting. Let's get to the right one. 
you can see I already set mine here. Um, but basically you're just going to add this line pressure underscore advance colon space and whatever your setting is. Um, for me, it's 0.82. Like I said, that's going to be different for everybody, depending on the results of your testing. Once you add this line, you're just going to do a save and restart and that pressure advanced setting will be in your printer. That, and that's it. That is how to set your pressure advanced setting on the Sonic Pad. Guys, if you like this video, if it's helping you out, please click on the subscribe button. Lots more content to come, and I will see you next time.